In this video, we consider estimation of gauge models in OX metrics. We consider the data set containing the monthly returns on the IBM share of stock. We start out by plotting the data. In the first graph, we've got the monthly returns of the share of stock. And in the second graph, we've got this the squared returns. As we can see, there are some periods with some large fluctuations in the returns. This suggests that there might be arch effects in the return series. In order to analyze the data in a bit more detail, we also consider the autocorrelation function. As we can see, it seems like the returns are autocorrelated of order one. This suggests that we may want to include an autoregressive term in the conditional mean for the returns. Moreover, we can see that the squared returns are highly correlated over time, again, indicating that the returns have arch effects. Next, we estimate the model in PCGIV. So we choose model, we choose PCGIV, and then models for financial data, and then GARGE models using PCGIV. Press formulate. We seek to model the returns, so we include the returns as the Y variable, then we include a constant in, in the mean equation, and then recall that it seemed like the returns were all too correlated, so we also include an AR term in the conditional mean. Then we proceed to specifying the conditional variance of the model, and we select a GARCH11 model, which is the default setting here in this package. Note that we could also consider some other variations of the GARGE model, including a threshold model or an asymmetric model. We could consider GARGE in mean models, and we could also consider the so-called E-GARGE model. We just stick to the plain vanilla GARGE 11 model here. We estimate the model by maximum likelihood, and we choose the entire sample. Then we get the output, we get an estimate of the autoregressive coefficient, we get an estimate of the constant term in the mean equation, we get a, an estimate of the constant term in the conditional variance equation, we get an estimate of the alpha, and an estimate of the beta. Note that the underlying assumptions behind estimating this model with maximum likelihood is that the standardized procedurals are normally distributed and independent over time. We can check that formally by considering misspecification tests of the standardized residuals. We do that by pressing test and choosing test. Then we can choose the normality test and a test for no arch. We can test for no arch of order five. That's okay. Then we can see that we reject the null hypothesis that the standardized residuals are normally distributed, suggesting that normal distribution is, uh, is not suitable for the standardized residuals. Moreover, we can see that we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no arch effects of order five, suggesting that there are at least no arch effects in the standardized residuals. We could also investigate the standardized residuals visually by simply storing them in our data set. So we choose storing database and then scaled residuals, which is the same as the standardized residuals. And we get a new column with the standardized residuals and we could compare the distribution of the standardized residuals to a normal distribution.
as we can see, it might be that the distribution of the standardized residuals has heavier tails than the normal distribution, suggesting that we may want to use a distribution with, with heavier tails, say the student T distribution. We can do that. Again, we formulate the model exactly the same as before, but now we choose non-normal error distribution, which refers to selecting the student T distribution for the st standardized residuals. And then in addition to the parameter estimates that we obtained before, we do also get an estimate of the degrees of freedom in the student T distribution. Moreover, we can consider plotting the estimated volatility. And we can do that by plotting test and then graphic analysis. And then we want to plot the conditional standard deviation, which we may refer to as the estimate of the conditional standard deviation. So this is the estimate of the square root of sigma t squared. And here we can see the estimated conditional standard deviation of the returns. Lastly, if we go back to considering the returns, we see that we do have some extreme observations which our model may not be able to capture. As an example, in December 1992, there was a large negative return. You can see here that the return was minus 30%, which is quite extreme. So we may want to include a dummy variable for, for this observation. we get a new variable, the dummy variable that is equal to one at this specific observation. And we can then include this dummy variable in our model. We do that by including the dummy variable here and, and we can see that it now enters in the mean equation. We could also include it to the conditional variance equation by right clicking and then choose this H and then the dummy variable enters in both the conditional mean and the conditional variance of uh, the model. We choose exactly the same specification as before, but including this dummy variable. Now we get an estimate of the coefficient to the dummy variable in the conditional mean equation and an estimate of the coefficient to the dummy variable in the conditional variance equation. Thank you for watching.